probably had a busy weekend reviewing the footage of a totally one-sided game. Is there anything that's come out of it that you can think of in a positive way? Um, well, when you're fairly one-sided, I presume you're all talking about us being oh, yeah. dominant within Completely the game. Completely dominant, yeah. So, yeah, but when you see complete dominance, then I think that's a positive in itself. Obviously, I'm not naive to think that obviously the result's the most important thing, considering we're at the business end of the season as well. So, hugely frustrating in the fact that we did have ample opportunity, we did have good territory. I thought our building patterns were very good to get us from our box to their box with relative ease. I think that we put some good quality into the box, maybe didn't finish things off when it came our way. I thought we put some poor quality into the box where I think our final ball could have been better and I think it, our strikers in good positions. Um, I think in terms of numbers in the box, I think that a lot of the time the numbers in the box were very good. Um, we just didn't have the guile, the final pass, the final finish, that, that little ingredient that makes the difference. Because I do believe if we scored one goal, I do believe we went on and won the game. Um, but the fact is, there, there's no there's no sort of solace in that really. I mean, it's hugely frustrating for me, it's hugely frustrating for the players, and even more hugely frustrating for the fans, because I didn't think we deserved that on the day. But... Ultimately, we've got to we've got to make it count. So, yeah, we know we've got what to do. We know we've got games to win coming up. I think that in the last five matches, we've conceded two goals, both for outside the box. We're back four behind the ball, um, one being a deflection that ends up in the back of the net, which is only shot on target. So, I certainly don't think it's all doom and gloom in terms of a performance perspective. Um, Results-wise, obviously hugely frustrating, but yeah, I, th I think that tweaks um, needed more so than, than anything else so I don't think we're far away. How do you go about, if you can go about, improving that, that last bit of play where it's the final decision making or, or just being a bit more clinical? Uh, what I will say is if you look at the front three that played and the positions they've played in, that's only the second time we've done that this season with that personnel playing where they are. The first game we win and we score what, three goals I think in that game so it worked really well. Um, I would say at that point that game was much more open. I think obviously conceding an early goal sort of made us have to break down a low block. And if you look at sort of Tyrese and Jacob, two of their strengths is sort of pace and legs and stretching the game in behind. And, and that sort of gets denied a little bit when teams sit that deep. Um, and we need to find another method of breaking them down. But having said that, if you look at the chances throughout the game, we'd more than enough to win the game, never mind draw the game. And on another day, I think one of them goes in and it changes the dynamic of the match. But unfortunately for us on that day, it, it didn't. And um, We seem to be scoring goals in batches at the moment. So when we score, we score three or we score four. Um, and in other games, we find it difficult to score at all. So, yeah, if, listen, if it, was, if it was one specific thing that I could highlight and say it's that, then I would, I would, I would go about fixing it. Um, I think our starts in games we'd like to see improve because I think conceding an early goal certainly handles any team. Um, so that's something we need to try and focus on for the next match. Swansea will be a completely different game. Uh, they're seven points off the playoffs. Uh, they lost in the last couple of minutes at Blackburn, played very well by all accounts. They'll, they'll be really difficult because they like to build from the back. Presumably there's a chance to press early and stop them doing that. Yeah, I, th I think that Swansea are a very specific type team in this league. And I think... Going for Blackpool to Swansea basically sums the championship up, you know, because like I said before the Blackpool game, we go out and we win 3-0 and we're really, really comfortable. It doesn't necessarily see, mean that that sort of um, solution is going to work for the next game because the next game in this league literally can be the opposite in terms of Blackpool don't play at all for the back, they kick everything forward, um, they land on second balls, they make it a fight. Swansea are literally the opposite of that. They'll open the pitch up as big as they can, they'll risk the ball. Um, and to be fair to them, when they get it going and when they get it working, they're a really good team to watch. However, I'm sure Russell's um, frustration will be for how good they are to watch. They've lost more games than what they would like this year, because I watched them against Birmingham yesterday as well, so I watched them three games yesterday. And Birmingham beat them 4-3, and how they beat them I'm not quite sure, but ultimately they did. There's a correlation there because I'm not sure how Blackpool beat us. But yeah, exactly, and and that's the, that's the frustration of being a coach because um, 
performance at times doesn't marry up with results, and that's probably the biggest frustrating and biggest frustration at, at certainly my job because. Generally, you'd like to think of performances of a good level and you create far better chances, you have much more territory, you have much better better openings in the game that you and you get your just rewards, but that isn't always the case. And that's that's the most frustrating thing. But what we can't do is sit here and cry about it, do you know what I mean? What we need to do is double down, be better, make sure we make better decisions, work on it every day and then, and hopefully that it will gradually improve. And I, and I think things have improved. I, mean, I don't think there's any doubts in that in my mind in terms of I look at that defensive record, I think it's a lot better. You know, two goals conceded, both outside the box. We're conceding very little shots. I think we're best in the league now if you're starting teams counter-attacking against us. So there's certainly been progress. But ultimately, what matters the most is the points you have on the board. And that's 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 our immediate sort of aim is to fix that. You played the front three and, and you had Campbell coming in from the left. Obviously, Jacob Brown can't do that because he's predominantly right-footed. But... Are there any plans to change that when all your strike force are, are ready? Because my my opinion, which I know it doesn't matter compared to yours, is that Campbell's better coming in from the right. Yeah, I think the difficulty we've got is when you're playing against a low block, what happens is they play deep and they play narrow, which means any time you come inside the pitch, that's where all their bodies are. So when you're playing against that type of shape, you need to really go outside them because that's where the space is. Now, if the game's more open... I would agree with your argument in terms of he's probably better potentially off that side coming in on his right foot. I do think it's important, but you do have some sort of natural width in your team somewhere, um, unless you're playing with proper pocket players. I mean, Jacob, Jacob arguably is a centre forward, and what we're doing at the moment is because we carried a real threat in the game at home, because ideally we would like to probably go down the route of a 4 3 3 more so than, than playing a back, a back three, we've sort of got him into an area where we're sort of playing up and inside a little bit to try and utilise what his qualities are um, and yeah I, I think to be fair to him I think he's done it well you know I think he's carried a threat he got a penalty and a goal in the last game he was unfortunate enough to score against Blackpool so like I said I, I don't think we're far away and I think what happens is naturally when you don't win everything comes under scrutiny and I understand that um, but I, I've, I've watched the game back twice I think now um, and yeah, there's bits that we can improve on as always, but I thought there was large parts of it that, that we did all right. Phil Jagielka came out after the game, said, as everybody could imagine, the dressing room was very flat because obviously everybody felt that they, they should have got something out of the game. They have to put that completely behind them now, as all the fans do, as the management do, and, and it's gone and just look forward to the Swansea game. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about it now, Ange. Do you know what I mean? Obviously. There's nothing worse, I can assure you, right, when you go to somewhere like Blackpool, you have as many opportunities as you have, you take a really big following up there and you feel as if you've let them down. There's no worse feeling than that. And that's as a player, that's as a coach. Um, and the lads the lads will be hurting from that. I'm certainly hurting from that. And we want to try and rectify it and we want to do better. So, like, I mean, there's not much more we can do. I don't think anybody, in my opinion can look at that and think there was a lack of effort for the players or anything like that. I thought the players gave everything they had. I thought they tried their best to try and force the issue and get the next goal. It just wasn't our day to, 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 to be clinical or to make that good decision when we needed it or that rub of the green sometimes that you need. You talk about the rub of the green. They had the rub of the green when Thompson turns and the ball flies in the net. They also had the rub of the green when Campbell had a great shot. It was deflected and the keeper made a great save. And it's just those small margins at the moment that are going against the club. Yeah, and, and, not, and not only that, what I don't want to do is I don't like sitting here putting things down as if it's fortune that makes a difference because it's not. But in any, in any walk of life, you need a little bit of fortune from time to time. I think if there's two penalties in the game as well, which were blatant. You know, I think Jacob Brown gets pushed with both hands. The referee's looking straight at it, doesn't give it. There's one where the ball works wide and Dwight Gale gets put in a headlock. Um, in the other moments, sometimes it can change the dynamic of the game. But listen, they weren't to be. So I'm not sitting here saying, oh, poor us and, and feeling sorry for myself. What we're doing is we've assessed it, we're frustrated with it. But the good thing is with this league is you've got an opportunity immediately to go and then try and rectify it. Because ultimately we go play really well at Swansea and we win. I'm not saying that that's forgotten about, but then we put ourselves in a far better place. There's stats and data for everything, and I know you look at all the data and stats, but in terms of substitutions, there are stats now where people say there's an optimal time to bring on your subs, but whether it's two or three. Brentford use it a lot. Do you have any fixed thoughts about when the best time is to bring a sub on, presuming there's not an injury? Well, I think the difficulty you've got with your subs, I think it depends on who they are. 
Do you know I mean? So I presume you're talking about like young Nathan Lowe, for instance. Well, no, I was just generally talking. Uh, yeah, but I think that if you've got a whole complement of your squad available and your competition for places is really high and you feel as if once you get to the 60th minute, for instance, which I presume is the time that a lot of people are suggesting that subs should happen, um, for that point, if you've got a full complement of players where you're going, he can bring us something different or he's going to add this ingredient or he's equally as good as the guy that's on the pitch at the moment and the margin between them. The problem we've got is if you look at our bench come the weekend, we've got a lot of kids in the bench. I'm putting young Nathan Lowe on there, he's 17, and to be honest, he's not been training with us a huge amount because Emery's been up because there's only so many young players we can take. We've had probably about five or six training with us on a regular basis for months now. And the fact is, Nathan's a really good player, but he's a 17-year-old kid. Do you know what I mean? And I'm not suggesting that he can't go in and do the job and get the goal. Of course he can, that's why I put him on the pitch. But I don't think at that point, um, in terms of the way the game went, we changed our shape a little bit. We went two up top, went a four four two. So I put Tyrese and I put Jacob up there, who are experienced players at the level, um, and and I've got a goal in them. So ultimately, we added Nathan at the end because it was sort of last throw of the dice type thing, and, and hope we could try and land on something. And to be fair to him, I thought he played very well in the few minutes he was on. He, he held did, the ball up well. He won a header in the box. Took the ball in two or three times really well. Laid it off. Got the header. I think the last three kick and nods it back across the box. He'd done everything that was asked of him when he came on. And uh, on to the injury news. Is there any good news on the injury front? Um, yeah, we've got a couple of sort of decisions, obviously, over the next sort of 24 hours, really. So we'll see how the lads are today, and then that'll determine whether whether we've got maybe one Will or those two be more like available. Pearson and Pe Pearson will be one of them. So he's, he's uh, we need to make a late decision on him. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure he's going to be he's going to be available, but we'll wait and see. And any of the other players getting better, like Time and Powell? Uh, yeah, Time and Powell are making better. They're making progress every day, but their injuries have obviously have got a term on them. Um, Bear St. Jolina came in yesterday, but obviously he's been suffering for the last week with tonsillitis and has been unwell. Um, again, I'm not convinced he's going to be fully ready yet. And Axel? Axel's not far away. He's just he's just got a sort of wee grumble in his, in his, in his legs at the moment, so... Again, he's another one we'll, we'll sort of take a view on today. Because that will help you change the system a little bit, won't it? If it'll, these players help get... everything. It gives yeah. you more competition. It allows me to freshen it up because, like, at the moment, I'm abusing Jags' body. Do you know what I mean? He's he's churning game out after game, and I thought he was excellent at the weekend. So, it's certainly his performance hasn't dipped. But it'd be nice to to have some sort of options there where I can sort of rotate them round. Connor Taylor's only just been back, he was only in the grass on Thursday, so realistically I sort of forced Connor into being back probably sooner than what, what he probably should have been for the weekend. Um, so yeah, it's, listen, it's, it's, been, um, it's been testing at times because we haven't, we haven't had a lot of people available. Thank you. Cheers. I think obviously just on Swansea saying, you know, possibly how inconsistent they are, they're flirting with the top side of it and then all of a sudden when you feel they're going to make a push on and probably Russell Martin feels the feels the same, they tend to hit the wall I suppose that sums up a lot of the teams in this division doesn't it? It sums up the league, Do you know I mean realistically if we're looking at even, Burnley are probably the most consistent team in the league, I think Middlesbrough put a really good run together, um, even Norwich of late have sort of dipped off a little bit, um, I think Sunderland are on a good run at the moment but if you look across the season like, if we won on Saturday, we were two points behind Norwich, and people are talking about Norwich competing to get out of the playoffs. So the margins in the in the league are very, very little. I mean, we could have went above two or three teams. I think that's where part of our frustration comes from, and the fact that we could have went up the league and, and sort of made progress, and we didn't manage to capitalise on that opportunity. So that that's where, obviously, our frustration comes in. But there's very, very little in the league. I mean, there's very little between the teams, and if you can put a good run together, you can really climb up and make good progress quite quickly, as Middlesbrough have shown. And Swansea will be aware of that, as you are as well, won't they, really going into this game, particularly, but they are a ball retention team. Does that make it difficult or more difficult the way you're going to set up then, Alex? Well, there's two methods against that type of team, isn't there? There's the type of, you go after them and you go and hunt them and you go and try and press them, or you sit in a block and you try and frustrate them and hit them the counter-attack. I mean, I don't think there's any middle ground in that sense. So they're really quite straightforward in terms of how we would like to play against them. Um, and then depending on who's available, will determine what I think the best course of action is for us. But I suppose the frustrating point for you is the performances you've had didn't justify maybe the results you should have had. Is that the frustrating point for you, Alex? Yeah, that, that, that as a coach is the hardest thing to accept. And the fact that when you feel as if you deserve more points, 
Um, because let's be honest, right? Nobody cares about what I've got to say when you lose. They don't care. It's just nonsense coming out of my mouth, and then it's just a case of, well, stop talking about it and get it done. I'm aware of that, so that's not lost on me. There's no naivety on my part in the fact that people just expect us to go and win a game, and I'm fine with that, so I'll, I'll continue to try my best to do that. Thank you, Alex. Thank you.